Hi, am I on the air? Yep. Fuck. Thanks. We interrupt our program to bring you a special broadcast. Is this thing gone? I said shots to Nick and Dawn. Him on the air radio every Sunday night, man. What up? Red Dragons. Shout out to the boy, Nick. I see you done. You about to witness the real talk, real talk. Put it in your ear. We reach it for the sky, but we put it in the air. Not a glass jar, but I tell it to you clear. Am I on the air? We rock. Here's your whip, man. Am I on the air? Here's this mic here for nothing. My demographic pull do box office numbers. Weekend review said we number one get us. Now y'all on here, we're number one get us. Uh, turn it on, Nick and Dawn. And I'm like, turn it up, what the f***, eh? We air it out, wear it out, and we winning Him on the air, follow back, and we trending You can't tell me what I bet not be Don't give a FCK about the FCC I'm the head for the hellas, voice for the voices Him on the air, Sunday night, and I'm off this What is going down, everybody? Welcome back to Am I on the Air? It's time for another new edition going down on this June the 2nd. Uh, Yes, it's a Monday night. Um, I do apologize. Didn't do a show last night. I usually always try to have a new episode up on Sunday nights, and it really, really pains me when I don't do it. Um, But it was a long weekend, a tiring weekend, and I usually record the show about 11 o'clock at night, and by... 10 o'clock last night, I was passing out on the couch. I was super exhausted. I was trying to watch the uh, season finale of Silicon Valley, and uh, I was passing out a million times during that show, and I said, you know what? I just need to go to bed early tonight. (laughs) So I sacrificed the new episode. I went to bed early, and but fret not, because here I am, less than 24 hours later, ready to provide you with the latest and greatest edition of Am I on the Air. So welcome. Tonight's show is titled A Million Ways to Blend on the Air. And it's Season 8, Episode 17. And uh, I'm very excited to be here. got two movie reviews for you. And if you couldn't tell by the blend of the titles, get it? Blend. Um, I'm going to be reviewing Blended, the new Adam Sandler movie, and A Million Ways to Die in the West, the new Seth MacFarlane film. So two big movie reviews, uh, plus all of your news and uh, entertainment to catch you up for the latest of uh, the week. So hang with me as we glide through everything that you need to know. So once again, welcome to tonight's episode, A Million Ways to Blend on the Air. All right, before I get started with the actual reviews, I want to shout out, uh, because this happened after the last edition, for those of you that might have missed it, last summer, I started a series called Am I Still on the Air? Am I Still on the Air was a spinoff of many episodes that I did, mostly movie reviews. Uh, that people were able to just check out, especially, I did it over the summer movie season, because there's, as you see, there's a new movie every seven days, and there was always something new to review. Um, A year ago, we weren't uh, as diligent as getting new episodes out on a weekly basis, so I started Am I Still on the Air, which was to provide quick little ten-minute episodes or so of movie reviews. After doing the last episode of Am I on the Air, where I reviewed X-Men Days of Future Past, um, I had several people saying, like, man, you really held back on that review. And I did, because on this show, I stay spoiler-free. I try not to discuss spoilers. I just want to give you basically a synopsis and give you an idea if the movie's good or not and tell you to go see it. X-Men Days of Future Past was such a cool movie and it was so special that I wanted to talk more as a whole on that film. So I came up with the idea of it was time to bring back Am I Still on the Air? So I reached out to a couple buddies of mine, uh, Geeky Pat, 
who has his own show this week with the Geek on Red Dragons Radio. Uh, I reached out to him, and I also reached out to Peeps the Geek on Twitter, and, uh, you know, the two geeky boys who I actually saw X-Men with. I reached out to both of them, and I said, you know, hey, I'm thinking about bringing back my Am I Still in the Air segment, and I would like to do this movie review spoilerific. Complete spoilers, let's just talk about it. And uh, they were both very excited to come on and do it. So last Wednesday, um, I brought back Am I Still on the Air, and the episode was X-Men Days of Future Past spoiler review. Um, And the funny thing about it is, I thought we would do about a half hour episode, and it actually went two full hours. The episode is about exactly two hours long. Um, but we really dug in deep. I mean, we talk about really the whole X-Men franchise as a whole, from, you know, X-Men 1, 2, 3, to First Class, to the individual Wolverine films, all the way up to X-Men Days of Future Past, and even X-Men Apocalypse, the next film coming up, what we think might happen. So there's a lot going on. And, you know, that's, it's a lot of talk from really diehard X-Men fans, you know, really digging into this franchise and continuity issues and what we liked and what we didn't like. Um, and it was, it was a ton of fun. So I really just want to take this time out again to thank Geeky Pat and Peeps the Geek um, for joining me. On that on those epi- on that episode because it was a blast and um, I, I am looking to continue doing am I still in the air and maybe just turning that into solely a spoiler review type show um, and then have you know those guys back on with me and stuff if we've seen the movie together and really just get to talk about it so I have a feeling we'll be doing one for Guardians of the Galaxy um, maybe Transformers you know so I'll, I'll keep you guys posted but if you didn't see it and you want to hear a spoiler review on X-Men Days of Future Past I highly highly recommend you go check out that Am I Still in the Air if you Go to amiontheair.com. You'll see it right there on the top toolbar. It has home, latest episode, and right next to latest episode is Am I Still on the Air. Click that link and you can view that episode right there. If you're subscribed to us on iTunes or Stitcher, you should have seen the episode already. It was automatically loaded to your feed. Um, But if you're looking for it on our website, it's got an exact link for it. Uh, Even over on Red Dragons Radio, there's an Am I Still on the Air tab, and you can listen to the show right there. So... All right, I just want to get that out the way and thank those guys again because it was a blast and and really I think you will really really enjoy hearing us talk about Days of Future Past if you go check out that episode. All right, let's get it going. Let's start with our movie reviews. So literally right after I recorded last week's show um, on Sunday night, on Monday it was Memorial Day. And I went and checked out Blended. Blended is the new comedy starring Adam Sandler with Drew Barrymore. Um, And I took my stepdaughter to go see it because she's a big Adam Sandler fan. She's nine years old and she loved, loved, loves a lot of his films. So the second she saw the preview for this, she was like, we got to go, we got to go. So I took her on Memorial Day. And I'm a very, very big Adam Sandler fan. I am. Um, But for some reason, this movie didn't... I saw the trailer, and I just really wasn't blown away by it, and I thought it would look kind of blah, to be honest with you. Um, But I always give Sandler the benefit of the doubt. And um, what really intrigued me about this film was the fact that Drew Barrymore was in it, um, because I love Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore together. I think their chemistry is excellent. Um, You know, Wedding Singer, one of the greatest comedies of all time, Uh, Fifty First Dates, another great comedy. These two just have amazing chemistry together. I really believe them on screen together. So that really intrigued me. Even though the trailer didn't sell me, I I was looking forward to it for to see how if they still had that chemistry together. Um, The premise sounded kind of dumb. It was like, you know, he's a single guy who's got three daughters, and she's a single mom who's got two boys. And they go on on a blind date, and they hate each other, um, but through turns of events, they end up on this um, African vacation, and they have to pretend to be a couple, kind of, because they're taking another person's voucher for the stay, so they they end up having to share a hotel room, kind of pretend to be a couple, but they hate each other. 
And of course, in typical Hollywood fashion, uh, as the days go on, the more and more time they spend together, they start liking each other and the kids start liking each other. And, you know, what I want to say about this film is I thought it was an, actually a really, really sweet film. Um, you know, I'm getting older and I have a family now and there's just, uh, there was something about this film and the way that like his kids related to each other and the way Adam Sandler's daughters really, um, connected with Drew Barrymore and Drew Barrymore again was just so good in this film. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that aspect of it, of seeing them all come together and, you know, have that same chemistry that they did in those other films. It was actually directed by the same guy that did Wedding Singer and uh, The Water Boy. So he's got a great track history with Adam Sandler. And um, it, it was a pleasant surprise. It really, really was. Because like I said, I was not looking forward to this film. And I was was really, really impressed. Um, is it an outstanding film? No. Is it, you know, something that I'm going to tell everybody to run out and see because it's just done so well? No. But, you know, based on what this was, based on the, the gimmick that they were going for, what they set out to do, based on the tar- target demographic, I think it really hit on most cylinders. Terry Crews was in the film, and he's amazing in it. Um, a lot of little cameos pop up in it. There's a nice little throwback to uh, to Wedding Singer and to uh, Fifty First Dates, which I thought was really, really cool. And there was a lot of really good laughs that I got out of this. I was really, really impressed with how many times I really laughed out loud at this film. So, you know, it, this this film's getting a bad rap. And a lot of people have disregarded it immediately based on previews. And like I said, I mean, I didn't even care for the preview, but I said, you know, let me be the, let me make my judgment for myself. And I'm glad I did. You know, you can't look at critic scores for Adam Sandler films. Take this film, for example. If you look at um, Rotten Tomatoes for critics, this movie has like a 15% Rotten (laughs) score. 15%. But if you look at fan ratings, this film has a 75% fans liked it. 75%. That's big. So, you know, most of today's movie-going public likes the film. It's just critics that can't seem to just let it be what it is. And they're always expecting it to be so much more. Don't overthink it. It's a fun romantic comedy that's really for the whole family. And if you go into it with that, with those expectations, I really do think that you'll enjoy it. This movie had a ton of heart. There was some good acting from Adam Sandler. There was some really good acting from Drew Barrymore. And, you know, I fell in love with these two again. So I, I, I this was a pleasant surprise for me. So out of five stars, I gave Blended three and a half. Um, you might say, why didn't you just give it four? Um... You know, it wasn't a four-star movie. It wasn't outstanding. I wasn't had tears in my eyes, you know, from the jokes. Um, but it was better than a three because it was better than just a good film. I, I, I liked it a lot. So that's where the three and a half comes into play. So three and a half out of five for me on Blended. And that'll take us to our newest review of the week. The um, One of the new releases... For this past weekend, and it's Seth MacFarlane's A Million Ways to Die in the West. Uh, This has been a film that I've been looking forward to for quite some time now. Um, I love Seth MacFarlane. I love his sense of humor. And this looked really good from the previews. I mean, the previews had me cracking up, especially the Red Band trailers. Uh, You got Liam Neeson in there. You got Charlize Theron. You got Sarah Silverman. You got Giovanni Ribisi. Um, you got Neil Patrick Harris, you got Amanda Seyfried, so a a solid, solid cast, really, really good cast, and basically the gist of this film is just, you know, Seth MacFarlane's character is, uh, dumped by Amanda Seyfried's character, she ends up hooking up with Neil Patrick Harris, uh, it makes Seth MacFarlane go real crazy, he wants to kill himself, he wants to leave town, um, Sarah, Sarah Silverman and Giovanni Ribisi are his best friends, and, you know, he's pretty much given up on everything, and Charlie Theron's character moves into town, and she ends up becoming good friends with him, and kind of teaches him how to shoot, and teaches him how to, you know, stand up to, you know, the other people in town that, that constantly laugh at him and think that he's nothing. And, oh, <laughs> um, 
普通<笑>ほら<笑> OK So anyway sorry about that guys、um, <laughs> Wife just came out and totally distracted me、um, So in any case、um, She comes to town, she befriends him, she teaches him how to be a better man and overall, and、um, wants to help him make Amanda Seyfried's character jealous and maybe make her come crawling back to him.、Uh, Liam Neeson is one of the most dangerous men in the, in the land, and he comes into town and, and pretty much wants to have a duel with Seth towards the end of the film.、Um, so, pretty basic storyline, really.、Um, but I loved it. I love this film. And this is a film right now that's really dividing a lot of people.、Um, it's getting some pretty horrible reviews <laughs> from a lot of people. And,、um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people just aren't happy with the type of humor that it is. And I don't know what you could have expected going into it if you've seen the trailer. Because, I mean, the, what the trailer shows you, those kind of jokes, everything it has going for it, is. Exactly what you get in the film, but in a bigger dose. And I thought it worked. The, the, the funny thing with this movie, and I was trying to explain this、um, to somebody at work, was you know, a typical comedy, like say Neighbors, for example, which just came out last month and I gave it five out of five stars. Love Neighbors. Super hilarious all the way through. Like, like the whole movie feels like a genuine comedy, and it's just so funny. A Million Ways to Die in the West runs a little bit differently, and I think this has to go, this has to deal with Seth MacFarlane and the way that he writes his comedy kind of like a TV show,、um, where it's kind of like story, 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 joke, story, joke, story, story, joke, 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 story, you know, to where he, he drops specific jokes and they're funny, and then you go back to the story, and then you drop another joke and you go back to the story. You know, it, it, the pacing is different. It's not like a typical comedy. But it, that didn't bother me. I just, I think for some people, it might throw them off. But when the jokes drop, I thought they were all pretty damn hilarious. So, you know, I know my humor is a lot looser than a lot of people.、I'm, I have a very silly sense of humor. I like the haunted house movies. I like, you know, I like really slapsticky, kind of over the top stuff. And, um,. That's what this is. I mean, if you're a fan of Seth MacFarlane and you like the humor that was in Ted and you liked,、um, you like Family Guy, stuff like that, you should love A Million Ways to Die in the West. You know, but if you watch the trailer and you're like, that doesn't look all that great, then don't go because you're going to not like it. I mean, if the trailer didn't sell you, you're not going to like this film. But if, but if you watched the trailer and you thought it was pretty damn funny, then go watch this because I'm sure you're going to think the rest of the movie is hilarious because I did. So, in the end, I gave A Million Ways to Die in the West four out of five stars.、Um, super solidly funny,、um, pretty consistently throughout the whole thing. There w a s a couple jokes that were a little too over the top for me, a little gross,、um, but it, it wasn't enough for me to have to scale the, the rating back.、Um, I had a great time watching it. I actually, Geeky Pat saw this movie with me as well. Uh, along with my brother in law, and、um, we all three really, really liked it. We came out of the film pleasantly surprised and, and had a lot of good laughs about it. And we were quoting the film for like the first half hour after getting out of the theater. And that's when I think you that's a pure sign right there that it was a pretty good comedy when you come out and you're, you're just quoting it and quoting it. And the very next day, I met up with my brother in law again and, at my in law's house. and... We spent half the afternoon just dropping silly quotes from the film as well. So, you know, I think it did its job. So, A Million Ways to Die in the West, four out of five stars, and blended three and a half out of five. And those, my friends, are your two movie reviews of the week. Alrighty, alrighty, all yeah. So, let's move on and、uh, let's get into. The news of the week.、Uh, so, I believe on last episode, I talked about how Alfonso c u a r ó n was in negotiations and probably was going to direct the new Harry Potter spin off, Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them. I'm going to take a drink here, real quick. All right, thank you. Well, Alfonso c u a r ó n will not direct. The Harry Potter spinoff, Fantastic Beasts, and Where to Find Them. That's your news.、Um, 
you know, he says he he does really like working with J.K. Rowling. Um, it just, it, this isn't the next project he wants to jump on to. Um, it seems like he wants to kind of get away from the special effects stuff. He doesn't really want to jump into another uh, special effects heavy type film where he's got to be in front of a lot of green screen and stuff like that. So he has decided to drop out. Uh, in some X-Men news, and I'm very excited about this, um, when the original reports were coming out about X-Men Apocalypse, they were saying that um, it was going to focus on the first class set of actors for the film. Well, after the huge success of Days of Future Past, Fox is now saying that some of the original cast members will return for Apocalypse as well. So, definitely leads me to believe, you know, are we going to see some kind of time travel again or are we just going to see like a future and then we're going to go back to the past again um it's going to be interesting to see how they end up doing it but i'm very excited to hear that some of the original cast is going to return for apocalypse over on our twitter page we got the first official trailer for true blood's final season so you can check that out on the twitter page um Bear with me here. I got a ton of news. I'm just trying to get in order. Um, honest trailer for Alice in Wonderland. Uh, this was pretty funny because I hated this movie, and this honest trailer is pretty hilarious about it. Uh, in the Everything Wrong with series, we got Everything Wrong with Oblivion in 12 minutes or less. Um, the They've announced the new X-Men Days of Future Past Deluxe Edition for Blu-ray. It looks pretty cool. It actually comes with a little Magneto helmet um, display. And uh, so I don't know how much it's going to go for, but it'd be kind of cool to have a little collectible Magneto helmet to display. So you, if you want to check out what that set actually looks like, you can check out the link over on the Twitter page. Uh, Noah is coming to DVD and Blu-ray on July 29th. Um, Johnny Depp is in negotiations to star as Houdini in a new Lionsgate film. Uh, I think that I think that's a pretty good role for Johnny Depp. I think he'd be pretty tight in a, in a Houdini film. Um, Netflix has gained the rights to Sony Animation Films, so that's pretty cool. They'll get some exclusive streaming rights on there. Um, Mark Wahlberg uh, has gone on record, and he's saying that the new Transformers film is more than meets the eye. Ah, nice little pun there, Mark. Um, but he's he, he's saying that you know people are going to be pleasantly surprised by this film. He says it's a fresh take on it. You know, we're going with the whole new cast. And um, he says, you know, it's not like the other films. It keeps the same action and stuff like that. But when it comes to story, the story's, you know, tighter. He says it's not as silly and slapsticky, which was what I was hoping they were kind of going to go for. And um, so he, he says it's just a whole nother beast. And he says people are going to really like the final product. So I'm already super stoked for this. It's my number one most anticipated film of the summer. So my fingers are crossed. I hope it really does deliver. Um... The original Flash from the old 1990s TV show, John Wesley Shipp played Barry Allen in that Flash show. We knew he was going to be a part of the new Arrow show over on the CW, but they were keeping his role a mystery. Well, that's until now, as we found out that um, he will actually be playing Barry Allen's dad. Yes, so he's moving on up, and he'll be playing his dad uh, in the series. Um... We have some more news on the whole Ant-Man situation Um, coming out. You know, after the last episode, we talked about Edgar Wright leaving Ant-Man, which was really sad because it was a project that he had been working on for over six years. And um, we had heard rumors, but nothing really solid. And now it's kind of coming out that it wasn't just a, a, a pure case of, you know, Marvel not liking the direction of Edgar Wright's script. And basically, they ordered a rewrite, and Edgar Wright did a little bit of a rewrite, but not enough of what Marvel wanted. So when they got they got his rewrite, they looked at it, and they said, eh, it's still not quite where we need it to be. They had one of their in-house people rewrite a piece of it, and then they gave it back to Edgar Wright, and Edgar Wright did not like what the Marvel guy did. So he said, nope, I don't like it, I want to change it, and Marvel said, nope, this is the direction that we need to go, and that's why Edgar Wright decided to leave the project, because he felt it wasn't truly his vision anymore. It's an interesting thing, and I really, I fall in the middle here when it comes to this, because on one hand, 
I get what Edgar Wright wants to do. I get that this is his baby, you know, and he's got a vision for this. On the other hand, it's Marvel, and Marvel has a vision. They have a vision that goes out to 2028. They know where their cinematic universe is going. They know what they need to do. And if Edgar Wright's script wasn't taking them there, what are supposed to do, you know? I mean, Marvel had to do what they had to do. And Marvel has consistently put out amazing films, and they have my faith. They have my faith a lot more than Edgar Wright does, you know? For me, I'm not the biggest Edgar Wright fan. I love Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and that's about the end for it for me. I know everyone else loves all his other films, but I've never been that big of a fan of his. Um, but I did love Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. So, But I was looking forward to his take on this. But in the end result, my faith lies with Fox. Or, not Fox, but Marvel. And I know that Marvel knows what they're doing, and I trust that they're going to get us there. So... You know, I'm sorry Edgar Wright lost it, but in the end result, I know Marvel's going to get us the film that we need to get. So, that is what it is. Um, Marvel, speaking of Marvel and their stars, uh, they have set the actor that will be portraying Daredevil in the Netflix TV series. His name is Charlie Cox. And when I first read about this guy, I was like, who? Who the fuck is Charlie Cox? Um, Because I was hoping it was going to be Michael C. Hall, because that was the rumor, but I guess that ended up just being a rumor. Um, Charlie Cox is um, a guy that's on Boardwalk Empire right now on HBO. Um, That's that's mainly what he's done. (laughs) And uh, he will be playing Matt Murdock slash Daredevil uh, in Netflix's 13-episode drama. So... um, from the people that have that do watch um, Boardwalk Empire and know who he is, they say he's a really good actor. So, you know, when I look at his picture, I'm kind of like, eh. But once again, I trust Marvel and and in their casting, and I think they know what they're doing. And if this guy is is a good actor, then I'll I'll let him be Daredevil. So we'll see how it goes. But at least we have an actor in place to do it. Quentin Tarantino's movie, The Hateful Eight, is back on track. Uh, This was the movie that he wrote and was going to do next, and then the script got leaked, and then he threw a big temper tantrum, and he said, forget it, I'm never doing this movie ever, ever, ever. Well, he's finally calmed down a little bit, and he's like, you know what, that was pretty stupid. So I think he did a little bit of a rewrite on it. He mixed a little couple things up, so if you did read the leaked script, it's not exactly that. And uh, it looks like they might start shooting in November. So congratulations there. Uh, to Quentin for settling down and giving people the movie that they wanted. Um, we have the third official trailer for Earth to, Earth to Echo. We have the first official trailer for This Is Where I Leave You. This is the new Jason Bateman movie. Um, this looks really, really good, actually. It's kind of been flying a little under the radar. It's it's more of a serious film than a comedy, but it's got Jason Bateman and Tina Fey's in it, and Rose Byrne is in it, and I love Rose. Um, there's actually a lot of people in this film, so check out the trailer. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, HBO has ordered a new Danny McBride comedy series, so I'm very excited about that, because I love Deastbound and Down, and Danny McBride, I believe, is going to be producing and starring in the new show, so I'm on board, I don't even care what it is, sign me up. Um, Critics' Choice TV Awards, let me bring this up, and we're going to run through... The nominations. Yes, it's nominations time for the Critics' Choice TV Awards. Let's get to it. Best Comedy Series. The Big Bang Theory, Broad City, Louie, Orange is the New Black, Silicon Valley, and Veep. Best Actor in a Comedy Series, Louis C.K., Chris Messina, Thomas Middleditch, Tim, Jim Parsons, Adam Scott, and Robin Williams. Best Actress in a Comedy Series, Alana Glazer, Julia Lewis-Dreyfus, Wendy McLovin-Covey, Amy Schumer, Amy Poehler, and Emmy Rosam. Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series, Andre Brower, Keith David, Tony Hale, Christopher Evan Welch, and Jeremy Allen White. Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series, Mayim Bialik, Laverne Cox, Kaylee Cuoco, Allison Janney, Kate Mulgrew, and Merritt Weber. 
Best Guest Performer in a Comedy Series, Uzo Aduba, uh, Sarah Baker, James Earl Jones, Mimi Kennedy, Andrew Reynolds, and Lauren Weedman. Best Drama for a Series is The Americans, Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, The Good Wife, Masters of Sex, and True Detective. Best Actor in a Drama Series, Brian Cranston, Hugh Dancy, Freddie Highmore, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew Rise, and Michael Sheen. Best Actress in the Drama Series, Lizzie Kaplan, Vera Farmiga, Juliana Margulis, Tatiana Maslany, Carrie Russell, and Robin Wright. Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series, Josh Charles, Walton Goggins, Aaron Paul, Peter Skarsgård, John Voight, and Jeffrey Wright. Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, Christine Baranski, Anna Gunn, Annette Mahendru, Melissa McBride, Maggie Siff, and Bellamy Young. Best Guest Performer in a Drama Series, Bo Bridges, Walter Goggins, Allison Janney, Joe Morton, Carrie Preston, and Diana Rigg. Best Movie, uh, it's all bull. Best Mini, Best Mini Series, American Horror Story Coven, Bonnie and Clyde, Dancing on the Edge, Fargo, The Hollow Crown, and Luther. Um... Just kind of skimming through. There's a ton of categories here. I'm not going to bore you guys with this. If you want to see the full list, of course, you can always get the list off of our Facebook and Twitter page. Um, Best reality series, The Amazing Race, Project Runway, Shark Tank, Survivor, Top Chef, and The Voice. Best talk show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, The Colbert Report, and Conan. And Best Animated Series, Archer, Bob's Burgers, The Simpsons, Family Guy, Phineas and Ferb, and Adventure Time. So, once again, that is your TV Critics' Choice Award nominations. And you can check that out over on the Facebook and Twitter page to see everything in its entirety. Um, Coldplay has a new album, it's called Ghost Stories, and it's going to debut at number one, and it's also going to be the biggest debut album of 2014. So congratulations to Coldplay, coming hard out the gate. Robert De Niro will star opposite Robert Pattinson in a new film called Idol's Eye. Chelsea Handler um, will be ending her E.T.V. show in August. Taylor Kitsch, uh, in an interview recently, said that the script for John Carter 2 was, quote, fucking awesome. Um, I'm, I'm bummed by this, and he seems very bummed by this, that we're never going to get John Carter 2. Um, you know, John Carter was a disappointment in the movie theaters when it came out. It was a pretty expensive film. It didn't make all that much money. It actually did really well overseas, but it was such a bomb in the domestic side that Disney kind of just gave up on it. Um, but hearing Taylor Kitsch talk in this interview and he says the script was already made and it was so good and it was going to take all these characters and great, you know, to great spots. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's disappointing because I really, really like John Carter and I'm just a little bummed that we're never going to see the sequel to it. And, And Taylor Kitsch definitely deserves better than what he's got right now because this should have been a franchise for him. And he should be coming back as Gambit, not Channing Tatum. Uh, but that's just my, my my word. You know, just saying. Um, I have the first official trailer for the U.S. version of Chris Evans' new film, Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer is a film that actually came out overseas um, a while ago. And they've been trying to get a version to come out here in the U.S. They finally locked it in, and they released the first trailer for that, so you can check it out on the Twitter and Facebook. Um, We have the newest trailer. This is trailer number two for Annie. Annie, of course, the new Jamie Foxx film. So you can see that Um, over on the page. We have... A new trailer for a movie. It's an animated film. It's called The Book of Life. And it's got voices by Zoe Saldana and Channing Tatum. So, if you want to see that, you can head over and check it out. We also have a trailer for the new Jeremy Renner film. It's called Kill the Messenger. So, check out Kill the Messenger. 
don't know if you saw this story, but um, Brad Pitt was attacked at the Ma- Maleficent premiere. He was there with Angelina Jolie, and there's this prankster who's an, uh, an interviewer from overseas, but he's been pranking celebrities. He pranked Will Smith one time, he pranked uh, Tom Cruise, and uh, this dude is just so insane. And uh, he jumped on Brad Pitt <laughs> at the <laughs> Maleficent debut uh, just a couple of days ago at the red carpet. So um, I don't know how this guy keeps getting away with this shit. It is, it's a little insane, especially because, you know, he has done it so many times already on red carpets. Like, how does how do people keep allowing this dude anywhere <laughs> near? So, um, if you want to read the full story on that, it's very interesting. You can check that out on the Facebook and Twitter page. If you're a Sons of Anarchy fan, and maybe a Marilyn Manson fan, you'll like this piece of news, because... Marilyn Manson is joining the next season of Sons of Anarchy. I don't watch the show. I find this to be a very odd pairing, but it is what it is. Um, There's a lot of new details released for Jurassic World, the new Jurassic Park film. I'm not going to read them because it could be a little bit of spoiler stuff for you. And I don't, once again, try not to do the spoiler stuff. So if you would like to read some details about... um, Jurassic World, you can check out that article over on our Facebook page. Um, James Cameron is working with Cirque du Soleil, and they're going to be producing a new live Avatar arena show. Um, This kind of excited me. I like Cirque du Soleil. I've been to Vegas multiple times. I've seen a couple of their shows, and they're they're incredible. And And I picture all the cool stuff they could do using Avatar. And I think it could be really, really cool. So this is this sounds very interesting to me. I don't know when it would get up and going, but an Avatar Cirque du Soleil sounds pretty cool. Uh, James Mangold, who most recently directed uh, The Wolverine, he's in talks to direct a Joe Namath biopic film. Kevin James is going to be starring in a new Swiss Family Robinson-inspired film for Sony Pictures. I love Kevin James, so he's another one that I'll watch pretty much anything of. World War Z has found its new writer, so the script is being written right now as we speak, and then they'll be moving along with getting the sequel to World War Z up and running. Uh, Anton Fuqua, who has directed a lot of movies in the past, he did um, Training Day, stuff like that, Um, he has directed Denzel Washington's new film, the Equalizer. Yes, The Equalizer is based on the TV show of the same name. Um, they started screening The Equalizer and to some early, I think it comes out in September, and some people started getting some early screenings on it, and the word is that the film is amazing. And so he is, right now the studios are really pushing on Antoine to make, an, to make a pick for his next uh, directing gig, and he's got Narco Sub, is an is a new action film that's on the agenda, Magnificent Seven, which would be a remake, and of course Equalizer Two. We haven't even gotten the first Equalizer, but they're already offering him up the sequel. So he has offers on the table, not to do all three of these, but these are three films that are on the table and waiting to see which one he wants to jump on. So it could either be Equalizer Two, the Magnificent Seven remake. Or Narco Sub. Um, DreamWorks Dragons, which is the How to Train Your Dragon spin off show. Uh, I forget what network it's airing on currently, but they're moving it and it will go to be a Netflix exclusive streaming show. Um, I talked to you before about community getting canceled. Uh, a lot of people were bummed out about this because the show's creator was saying that they were going to do a community, they were definitely going to do the sixth season and then they were going to be. Um, probably gonna, they wanted to do a movie, like all this stuff, and then the show got canceled over on NBC. Um, now it's looking like Hulu might be saving Community. So Hulu is in negotiations uh, to bring back Community for a sixth season. Um, they're still working on it. They say that the Hulu guys are really, really want to bring this show over to Hulu, and um, there seems to be all the right things are emotion, um, but you gotta wait and see. You know, nothing, nothing is in the books for sure. But get your fingers crossed if you're a community fan because you might be getting that sixth season after all. Um, over in video game news, 
Watch Dogs is the newest video game to come out. I actually purchased it for the PS4. I love it. It's a lot of fun. It's a really, really cool game. Open environment, great graphics. And uh, it was released by the company Ubisoft. And it broke all of Ubisoft's records in literally one day. It's their highest selling video game of all time. So congratulations to Ubisoft and Watch Dogs. Uh, we have the rejected MPAA poster for Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. This poster features Eva Green, and uh, it's, it's on her character. And yes, they submitted all these character posters, and hers was the one that got denied. And they listed that it was because of nudity. And so I was like, what? So I took a look at the poster, and I could see why it was banned. Um, I absolutely love this poster, and I would love to have it up on the wall. But I can see at movie theaters people saying, eh, it's a little bit risky. She's basically naked with a white sheer gown on over it. And the gown is pretty see-through, so you see the outlines of everything. And, uh, yeah, it was a little too risky, so the MPAA rejected it. But they released the poster anyway online. So if you would like to check out that poster, and I think you should, uh, it's over on our Twitter and Facebook page. And uh, it's a really cool poster. I like Eva Green a lot. After seeing her in 300, um, Rise of an Empire, I'm a big, big fan. And she's great in Penny Dreadful as well over on Showtime. AMC has set the Hell on Wheels Season 4 premiere for August 2nd. Um, Maleficent is currently rotten at 47% over on Rotten Tomatoes. Most people don't like this film. I was maybe going to have a review for this as well, but uh, after hearing a lot of people say it's not all that great, including Geeky Pat, um, I'm kind of not in any rush to see it. So if I see it, I see it. If I don't, I don't. Uh, But the majority of people are saying it's not all that great, as you can see by its rotten rating over on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, we have another new trailer for a movie called A Walk Among the Tombstones, and this is a new Liam Neeson movie. Um, the funny thing about this trailer is it's basically Taken 3. Uh, this guy, uh, his wife has been taken, he calls Liam Neeson, and says, I need your help, I need your help to find her, and, and it's, it's an action movie that looks very much like Taken, and it involves a situation like Taken, so, uh, but it looks pretty good, so even though it's kind of a rip-off, uh, I'll still probably check out A Walk Among the Tombstones. We got another movie here, another trailer, it's called What If?, and this is a new film starring Daniel Radcliffe, Mr. Harry Potter himself, it's a romantic comedy film. Um, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg's Sausage Party has been set for a June 3rd, 2016 release date. There you go. Uh, we have the first pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Amelia Clark in uh, Terminator Genesis. So you can check those out over on the Twitter page. Um, pretty cool to see Schwarzenegger back as the Terminator, even though his hair is gray. Um, and I've had a lot of people say, how how is Schwarzenegger in Terminator again when he's so much older than he was in the last films? Um, they've actually done a pretty cool thing with it, and they basically are saying that, you know, even though the exoskeleton and the robotics underneath don't age and it's a robot, the outer layer skin that's on it does age because it's human flesh, so it still ages on top. So I think it's a pretty smart explanation. And... Uh, you know, it's, uh, I'll, I'll let it slide because we need to, and, and I like that. Um, moving on, MGM has announced that Warner Brothers is going to be launching a brand new Stargate trilogy with Roland Emmerich directing. Uh, this is very interesting because most articles are calling this a reboot, and, um, you know, the cool thing about it is that Roland Emmerich is back and attached. Dean Devlin is going to produce, Roland Emmerich is going to direct. And those two guys did the original Stargate film, so it's kind of unique because most times when franchises get rebooted and stuff like that, it's not done by the same people. Um, But it's kind of cool to have the same eye behind it because that's what made the first film so special. So it's very interesting, they're going to do a whole new trilogy on it. Um, On top of that... 
I just don't know when they're going to do this because um, Roland Emmerich is already set to do the next two Independence Day films. So I don't know where he's going to have time to do a trilogy of Stargate films on top of that as well. So it might be several, several years before the Stargate trilogy gets done. But at least you know it's coming back. Um, Another new trailer, we have the new trailer for Left Behind which is the new Nicolas Cage film. Uh, the, we have the second trailer for Begin Again. Begin Again is the new uh, movie starring Kira Knightley and Mark Ruffalo. Looks really looks pretty good, too. Um, writing the Cliffhanger reboot right now as we speak. Yes, Cliffhanger, the Sylvester Stallone film. Uh, I loved Cliffhanger as a kid, and uh, I would be interested to see a new Cliffhanger film. You know, one of the craziest scenes, man, Sylvester Stallone holding on to that girl. Don't let me go. Don't let me go. And then dropping her all oh, to her death. Oof. Crazy, crazy scene. But, um, you know, that's cool. Um, I know no one's set to direct or star or anything like that, but they are writing the script for the Cliffhanger reboot. Uh, Roland M. Oh, sorry, I already talked about Roland Emmerich. Sorry. Um, I just talked about Seth Rogen's new movie, Sausage Party, which comes out June 3rd, 2016. Well, they've also added Paul Rudd and Danny McBride to the list of, uh, a movie, uh to the movie. So I'm super excited about that. Once again, I love Danny McBride, like I told you earlier. And, um, I love Paul Rudd. So I knew this cast was going to be excellent and it continues to become more and more excellent. I'm a little saddened by this. There was a new movie going to be done called Brilliance, and Brilliance was going to feature people with special abilities, special powers, um, kind of a loose superhero type movie. And Will Smith was going to be in it. Will Smith was going to be one of the people with powers. Well, he, just last week, he abruptly dropped out of the program. He dropped out of the movie, no explanation, just left. And I don't know. I don't know what happened, and it's a little bit of a bummer because I was looking really forward to Will Smith being a part of Brilliance. So, definitely bummed out about this. Um, This shows you how fast news is going, because, uh, you know, we talked about Edgar Wright leaving Ant-Man, and then at the end of last week, an article came out talking about Adam McKay, Rawson Thurber, and Ruben Fletcher were the three contenders to direct Ant-Man. So, these guys comedy directors. I mean, Adam McKay is the guy that works with Will Will Ferrell all the time. He did the other guys. He did the Anchorman movies, Step Brothers, stuff like that. Um, Ross and Thurber did um, Dodgeball. He did Were the Millers. And Ruben Flesher did Zombieland. He did uh, Gangster Squad. So, I mean, pretty much comedy directors for the most part. So it was an interesting list of names. Then, the next day, it seems that Adam McKay is the lead Contender, he, he's he's the one they're moving into negotiations with. And then on Saturday, the news comes out that Adam McKay is out, and Adam McKay cited that he's it just didn't work with his schedule. Which a lot of people are saying like, oh, that's bullshit. He's lying. It's just a, that's a weak fake excuse. Um, I don't know if that's the case. To be honest. You know, I, I think sometimes, you know, you just don't know. You go into to a negotiation, you go into a talk to see what's going to happen. And maybe, you know, he thought he could swing it. And then Marvel said, you know, you're going to be making this movie from July to October. You know, and maybe October 10th he's supposed to be starting on another film and it, that he's already committed to, and it just doesn't work out. So, I mean, that could have been what happened, you know, uh, but a lot of people are jumping straight to the negative aspect saying, oh man, something's up with this movie. If Edgar Wright dropped out, and now Adam McKay dropped out. You know, I, I think Adam McKay was interested, but he wanted to see what Marvel had to offer and what kind of schedule they were looking at. And I think, you know, he's already got things on the books, and it just didn't pan out logistically. That, that's my take on it. I don't think there's any hard feelings. I don't think it was anything about the script. Yeah, I would have been interested to see an Adam McKay version, just because, I mean, his chemistry, obviously, with Paul Rudd is really good. So, um, so we're back to step one as far as the director for Ant-Man. I'm thinking this news will break at some point this week, but we'll see. Um, Bitten, over on the Sci-Fi Channel, has been renewed for a second season, starting in 2015. Um, s- sex Tape 
the new Jason Segel, uh, Cameron Diaz mo- movie, another new comedy, uh, that their release date for that movie has been pushed up a week. It was going to come out July 25th. It'll now be out on July 18th. So that's cool. I- I'll take that. Uh, in some pretty cool casting news, I like this. Marvel announced that Josh Brolin will be voicing Thanos in Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers 3. So I'm very excited about this. I hope he does some motion capture and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I'm sure he'll do more for Avengers because um, Guardians is pretty much done at this point. I think they've already done CGI-wise what they wanted to do with Thanos. And then Josh is just going to go in and, and lay a voice track down. Um, maybe they'll do a little bit of mocap for his face or something like that since they got him now. I mean, we're still a couple months out before the movie comes out. I think I'll probably squeeze that in. Um, but I think it's cool. Josh Brolin is definitely an interesting voice. He's got a, he's got the face that I can see being digitized purple, and uh, I think it, I think it's very interesting. So it's good to to know who will be behind Thanos, and it's good to actually get the first official confirmation that Thanos will even have something to do in Guardians of the Galaxy. We all assumed it, but Marvel never let it out the bag until now. So Josh Brolin voicing Thanos in Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers three. Sorry, taking on a sip, getting parched. Lionsgate is moving ahead on a Hunger Games theme park. It's going to be one of these traveling kind of things that will have all kinds of games centered around the Hunger Games. So that'll be interesting. I'll let that just sit where it is. This news story broke on uh, May 30th, and I was really saddened by it. Not that I watched the show, but just at the situation and the way this was handled. The Arsenio Hall show has been canceled. The sad part about this is that just about a month ago, Jay Leno came on the Arsenio Hall show, and he announced and broke the news to Arsenio that the show had been renewed and picked up for a second season, and everybody cheered and was so happy and it was so cool. Well, the studio has reneged, and they've come back and they've said, actually, sorry, we're not going to renew you, and we're canceling due to poor ratings. So, this is one of these rare stories that I think I've ever heard of a show getting renewed and then saying, oops, never mind, we're canceling you. So, I feel bad for Arsenio on this. Like I said, I didn't watch his show, but... I, I feel pretty bummed out that, I mean, it's got to be a pretty big bummer when you're told, hey, you're coming back, and you get all excited, and you're, you're super stoked, and, you know, you and your whole crew and everybody's got their job still, and then all of a sudden they say, never mind, sucks. Um, got some news on the release of the Captain America The Winter Soldier DVD and Blu-ray. It will be hitting stores everywhere on September 9th. So very, very cool. September 9th will be the 3D Blu-ray combo pack along with the 3D DVD uh, on demand and everything. Uh, If you want to get it just digital, it will be available a little bit earlier on August 19th. Um, The one thing that sucks about this is that Marvel has decided to opt out of doing a one-shot. You know, Marvel loves doing one-shots on all their Blu-ray releases and they actually did not do one for the Winter Soldier release. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Just a bit. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1 will be hitting Blu-ray and DVD on September 9th. Uh, The next Friday the 13th movie has been pushed back 8 months. It was supposed to come out in March of 2015 and will now come out November 13th, 2015. One sec... Just making sure here what we got, if there's anything left out. Oh, big box office milestone in just nine days. Nine. Count it up. Less than two weeks. X-Men Days of Future Past has become the biggest film in X-Men franchise history as it has crossed $500 million worldwide. $500 $500 million worldwide in nine days. Wow. I mean, much deserved. Once again, if you haven't listened to our spoiler review, go check out Am I Still in the Air? <laughs> um, but wow, much, much deserved. $500 million in nine days. Oof. 
Um, in some sad news, the Brady Bunch star Anne B. Davis, she passed away yesterday at the age of 88. So definitely our prayers and thoughts go out to her and her family. Um, Ruben Fletcher, who we talked earlier about being one of the contenders for Ant-Man, he is actually now also in the running to direct Ghostbusters 3. And you know what? I really like this, because once again, Ruben is the guy that did Zombieland. And the way Zombieland was done, I think is a perfect fit for Ghostbusters 3. So, I think it's pretty cool. My fingers are crossed that this one ends up panning out. Um, in some really big casting news, this actually just dropped today, so it's a good thing I did the show on Monday, so I could drop this news on you. Uh, Star Wars Episode Seven has, has added a couple new actresses. You know, when, when all the um, cast was released about a month ago, one of the biggest concerns from a lot of people was that there was no females. There was only one female listed uh, in that cast. Well, today they rectified that as they announced two new actresses, as Star Wars Episode Seven has added Gwendoline Christie, who is on Game of Thrones, and Academy Award winner Lupita Nyong'o. Yes, a lot of people have been speculating that Lu- uh, Lupita was going to be on this, and they've been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Nobody wanted to confirm it, but she was very heavily rumored, and today... It was made official. So, once again, Lupita Nyong'o and Gwendolyn Christie have officially joined Star Wars Episode Seven. So, very cool. Curious to see who Lupita ends up playing, because a lot of people are saying she might be a Sith. And that would be pretty interesting to do a female Sith for once. So, we will see. We also have all of the fall premiere dates for NBC's lineup. So, if you want to check that out, um, go ahead and click on the link. Uh, It'd be easy to find because it was just posted today over on the Facebook page. You can see NBC's fall premiere dates that list out every show and when they debut. Um, Rob Liefeld, who is behind X-Men X-Force, sorry, um, he did an article today saying that he was pretty bummed out that Marvel announced that they were going to do X-Men Apocalypse because... Before they announced Apocalypse, they were saying with him and the screenwriters that they were going to move forward on X-Force. And ever since they announced X-Men Apocalypse, they've kind of put X-Force on the shelf and said, you know, let's hold off a little bit. So the people behind X-Force are pretty, pretty bummed because it looks like that's going to be on hold for quite some time while they move forward with the current X-Men franchise. Which, of course, you know that's going to be the priority, especially after we just talked about x and Future Past making over $500 million in less than 10 days. Uh, King of the Nerds has also been renewed for Season 3 over on TBS. Um, if you're a fan of Sherlock, and that's the, um, the English version starring Benedict Cumberbatch, um, Sherlock Season 3 is now available to stream over on Netflix. Uh, NBC has set the release date for the Constantine premiere. Constantine will debut on October 24th. And um, and last piece of news here is we have the brand new trailer. This just dropped today for Eli Roth's new horror film, The Green Inferno. Yes. Um, I actually haven't even had a chance to watch this new trailer yet. I watched the teaser. Um... I watched the tr- the teaser trailer when it came out a couple months ago, but I didn't see the first the full official trailer, and that was released today. So check out uh, the Green Inferno over on the Facebook page and and Twitter page. Sorry. Um, and let me double check, but I believe that will yep that'll do it for the news. Let's head on over to our release dates of the week in the box office, and we'll wrap this baby up. Um, Out on DVD and Blu-ray tomorrow is going to be Lone Survivor, Robocop, and Son of God. Um, I will be personally be picking up Lone Survivor and Robocop. I really enjoyed both of those films and look forward to checking them out again on Blu-ray. In theaters on Friday, Edge of Tomorrow and The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, I've been looking very forward to Edge of Tomorrow. I will be seeing that this weekend at some point, probably on Sunday. 
before I do the next episode. So um, I'll have that review for you on Edge of Tomorrow. And let's talk box office. Coming in at number 10 is The Other Woman with $1.4 million. Number 9 is Chef with $2 million. Number 8 is Million Dollar Arm with $3.7 million. Number 7 is The Amazing Spider-Man 2 with $3.8 million. Number 6 is Neighbors with $7.7 million. Number 5 is Blended with $8.4 million. Number 4 is Godzilla with $12.12 million. Number three is the debut of A Million Ways to Die in the West with $17.1 million. And uh, I want to take a quick second here on this $17 million for A Million Ways to Die in the West. A lot of people, a lot, are saying this is a disappointment. They're saying, oh, it should have been so much more, and Ted made so much more, blah, 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 blah. This is not a disappointment, okay? It was never going to make what Ted did. This was a Western oddball comedy. First of all, Westerns don't do do not do very well in the box office. And when you make a rated R Western, I just, no one expected it to be in the Ted vicinity. Um, the movie cost less than $40 million to make. Less than 40 And it made almost 20 already. So it's already made almost half its money back. It hasn't really... Um, you know, it's made $10 million internationally on top of the 17 that it did. So in about another week, it'll make its money back. You know, so a $17 million debut is really not too shabby. I think anything over 10 for this film was pretty good. I just think a lot of people were expecting it to do, you know, like the 50 plus million that Ted did. And because it didn't, you automatically say, oh, it bombed. No, it didn't. So stop that. All right, seventeen point one million for a million ways to die in the West at number three. Number two is X Men: Days of Future Past with another thirty-two point six million and another ninety-five million internationally. Uh, and your number one film in the world is Maleficent. Maleficent debuted at number one with seventy million dollars and then another hundred million uh, internationally as well. So one hundred and seventy million in its opening weekend. Very very big for Disney. Very big for Angelina Jolie. It was the biggest debut in her career. And um, yeah, congratulations. I mean, the film's not getting too hot of reviews, but it's not stopping the families from going out and seeing it. So Maleficent, your new number one film. All right. And that, my friends, is going to do it for us. So thank you again for tuning in, checking us out. Um, much appreciated. And uh, I just want to say hello and thank you to all the new people that have been checking us out lately. We've had a lot of new traffic, and uh, I thank you all for tuning in and, and giving us a shot. Um, I'd like to give a second to shout out our affiliates, RedDragonsRadio.com, RedDragonsRadio.com. Uh, follow on Twitter, of course, at Red Dragons Radio. You can like us on Facebook at Red Dragons Radio. And uh, it's a one-stop shop hub. You can listen to Am I on the Air. You can listen to Geeky Pat Show this week with the Geek. You can listen to Inside the Ropes. Uh, and we're also talking to a couple other shows for joining the network. So it's just growing, and it's a hub to listen to some really cool podcasts. Uh, I'd like to shout out um, the Nerd Emporium. The Nerd Emporium is one of our original affiliates, and they've come. They've just recently went back up on the air, and um, so we synced right back up with them. So shout out to the Nerd Emporium. And, of course, you can always subscribe to us on iTunes, download, rate, and subscribe to us on iTunes. It definitely helps out. If you're looking to get us on the go, download the Stitcher app on your mobile device, and you can listen to us there. Feed is automatically updated right after the show finishes recording. Um, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash am I on the air. Um, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Follow us on Twitter at am I on the air. Follow me on Twitter at dxdonmega. Um, the official webpage for us is, of course, am I on the air.com. Very easy to remember. You can see all the affiliate stuff. You can see movie reviews. You can see the box office. You can listen to the shows. Everything's right there. Am I on the air.com. And, um, and add us to your circles on Google+. Plus. We're everywhere. So thanks once again for tuning in. This has been another glorious edition of Am I On The Air. It's been a lot of fun, and I appreciate you all tuning in. Until next time, peace. Don Mega, Don Mega, Don Mega. Red Dragon!